I was today years old when I heard the beautiful Erica Badu pass on this message. 85% of people are followers. 10% are creators and leaders. And 5% are observers. What you desire and what you want aesthetically and or spiritually usually leads to what you need. Now, I'll be honest. I did not research to see if she received this message from somebody else. But nonetheless, message delivered. Right at the perfect time, if I do say so myself. And let me explain why. Spiritually, I'm going through a shift. I don't know exactly what the shift is, but I do know every shift prepares you for your next level in life. And as an individual, you either grow, take on the lessons and challenges that come your way, or avoid them keep in denial, and either stay stuck with a chance of repeating the same cycle down the road. Currently, my shift involves a lot of tides, a lot of growth, confusion, overthinking, letting go, releasing, cleansing, movement, intuitive listening, and even rebuilding. And it wasn't until I heard this quote, everything finally made sense. I'll explain again. I was constantly trying to speak life into people because I always seen their greatness and how much one could actually do or create for themselves to take themselves out of the stress that they seem to be in. Yet, I found myself talking in circles because these individuals would say, yes, I should or I will and nothing got done. And I'm the type of person that when I talk something, I want to make sure I'm walking my talk. But then, to my surprise, after some self-observation, I found myself constantly talking, but no movement. And the reason I've concluded for this was because I became one of my peers. Also, taking on my unconscious family members' fears, whom were just trying to make sure I was protected. But little did they know, it was stopping me from fulfilling my purpose. So upon hearing this quote, it created another shift. It made me check in with myself. It made me see which percentile I felt I was in, and from that moment, I started to move according to my intuitive guidance. I no longer was trying to convince people of their worth. I just look and appreciate them for who they are, and if they're in my life, I just allow them to be themselves from the standpoint of who they are and the extent. and value that we will add to each other's life. It shifted everything. I was no longer feeling guilty for my desires because with the help of this quote, it was going to lead me to what I needed. And I was no longer going to stay stuck or try and force people to come along the journey with me because I didn't want to leave them behind. Let bygones be bygones and allow the journey to unfold as it should. All guilt suddenly vanished. All talk, frustration finally became momentum. And all confusion, like why people like to complain about things they don't like, yet form no plan of action to actually escape it. Or... Why do people get so excited about working for some other people and not themselves? Finally made sense. 
This quote explained why I cannot shake my heart's desires. Why fulfillment doesn't quite feel fulfilling yet. And why I constantly feel moved to flow in a certain direction. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Hopefully, this audio podcast, Kill Two Birds with One Stone, i.e. shed light on those who needed it. Until next time, I will catch you in the next one. Later days.